So in conclusion, we have broadened our understanding of one of the most important Mesoamerican iconic motifs, the famous feathered serpent. By recognizing the creatures represent an animal symbol for a surprisingly important plant. A plant whose prominence and importance has been understated uh, thus far by historians. And to be sure, the central role of the water lily in Mesoamerican symbolism has yet to receive sufficient attention. In this connection, one avenue of research will require a more detailed study of the recurrent feature of the cosmic dragon that we have alluded to in the present episode, that being the water lily skull figure that often takes its place at the end of the feathered serpent. At Palenque, we see that the long-nosed water lily skull icon produces flowering shoots from his cranium, stems of which take on a meandering serpentoid aspect. When this skull is separated from the serpent's body, he is normally referred to in the literature as the water lily monster, even though the god is normally smiling and seemingly benevolent in nature. This would be, however, the exact same long nosed skull that assumes an attached position on the tail end of Maya feathered serpents, as observed here on a large and rare wood lintel from uh, pre-Columbian Guatemala. This god's water lilies normally extend from his ear, but also occur as a top knot uh, on top of the skull. A smaller replica of the skull occupies a more proximal portion of the serpent's body as well. So the feathered serpent and the skull, whether connected or detached, represent one and the same deity. A collection of these images are often arrayed on facades and cornerstones of Maya limestone structures. As exemplified by this specimen, uh, found among the massive ruins of Copan. He has the same skull features, coils within his eyes, water lily ear flares, and a stylized water lily on his cranium, a crew cut and a long nose that we find in the detached long nose god that lives as a skull underneath the water. In this instance, his long nose has obviously gone missing. But when this symbolic form appears individually or in groups on temple walls, he is usually referred to as Chalk, as if he were a different being in relationship to the same skull that occupies the tail end of the Maya feathered serpent. Chalk, as a god, is normally identified with storms, rain, and watery abodes, much as his equivalent in the land of the Toltecs and Aztecs in Mexico, a god known as Tlalo. Since these related gods occur as frequently among famous rooms of Mesoamerica, we will require another episode to give them their due. <laughs>